Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're doing our video on our review of the Carnival Celebration. Listen, this is our second time on the Carnival Celebration. Yep. So not only are we going to be able to give you our review of it this time, we're going to give you some comparables from last year to this year. But we're going right. to talk about everything from embarkation, debarkation, the ship, the food, the drinks, the positioning of our cabin, all of the things that are important to you. And then later on in the comments, we want y'all, after you watch this video, don't stop watching the video to do this, but finish watching the video. Then we want to know if you've been on this sailing or on this ship, let us know your thoughts as well. And then also, we also going to let you know what the change since the last time we was on there. I said that already, but let's go ahead and get into <laughs> oh, so I didn't hear you say it. I, I said it. comparables. This is what happens when you have a husband and wife doing videos and one be talking and the other don't be listening. And we're not cutting none of this out because this is how I go. Let's, let's get, get it into, into it. embarkation day. <laughs> All right. Embarkation day. Embarkation day for me was smooth. Like. Up until a certain point, but we'll get to that. Embarkation day for Carnival has been different for the last couple of years. I can't say that I blame them because honestly, the passengers did it to themselves. What I mean by that is the dogs are there. They are still there and yep. they are still doing security checks with the canines. I don't think that is going to change anytime soon. Oh, no. So it is what it is. I will say from last year to this year, I feel like it's a little bit more relaxed because last year, going through the security line, they had the dogs going back and forth at one point. Then you get to another point in the security checkpoint. You have to put your bags Damn. down, yeah. let the dog sniff it, and the dog will kind of circle you a little bit. This time, it was more of a go through security. They check everything. Then you get to a certain point where they would line you up by like 50 to maybe 75 people. Something like that. Yep. And then the canine would be brought back and forth to sniff everybody's bags as they're being lowered down to the ground and whatnot. So that part was smooth for us. Like that probably took 15 minutes at the most. Yeah. 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 Until. Until. Like the queen said <laughs> earlier. That this time we was like so excited to board the ship because we considered that we had an early check-in time. So yeah, we, we had I, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. <laughs> man, we was like, oh wait a minute, that was So we we like the queen already said it was so smooth. We got past the dogs, got <laughs> past security, got in there. We come around the corner in the holding tank that we call it. I saw all these people just sitting up in here like this, like, ain't like they, sardines in a can. Ain't they like supposed to be on the ship right now? We got, we had to end up being in the holding tank for at least an hour, hour, hour and a half. I don't, we don't know why Carnival did it like this, but however, I would like for you guys that have been on prior sailings before the May the 12th sailing we was on, if you had a 10 a.m. check-in time, did they make you sit in the holding tank? For about an hour before they let you get on the ship. Yeah, we are very curious. That didn't make sense. Or was it just on our sailing? So we was like, maybe they did this. Well, I was like, well, maybe they made it did this to try to con do crowd control so that we will already sense. be there at 10. So when they open the doors at 11, we can flow on and the other ones can flow that in to failure. reduce the crowd outside. But I, I, I don't know. But I just... You don't come there at 10 a.m. for your check-in time to wait. <laughs> to wait. I could have <laughs> no. waited at the hotel. Yeah, we could have stayed at the hotel for another hour. Like, it so, just didn't make sense. Right. So, so my advice <laughs> is, even if they have the 10 a.m., I would still stay closer to that 11.30, 12 o'clock-ish um, check-in time, if you can. Like, if you're just not eager to get on, because I don't know what that is. Right. All right, so the next thing we're talking about is debarkation, since we don't cover embarkation. The yeah. last time we was on Conno Celebration, debarkation was very smooth, but however, we got off towards the latter the part end. of the thing. So everything was pretty smooth. So we're not sure exactly how it went if people who went earlier, but this time we actually was able to get off earlier. Right. And to our surprise, it's still chaotic it's very chaotic <laughs> and when i say chaotic for those of you who are new to carnival carnival have two different debarkation day processes one you can do express checkout number two 
uh, well, express check out, you can take your bags off yourself so right. you don't have to wait. Then you have the check out option or check in option where you can put your bags outside your room the night prior, night prior by eleven p.m. and they will come and take them downstairs and then you can be able to and pick they'll them call up. you by zones, right? But let's not forget now they're trying something new yeah. in the app where they're supposed to tell you via the Carnival Hub app which zones, kind of like your Delta app at the airport, yeah. where it says <clears throat> boarding zone da da da, boarding zone da da da. We never saw it. Yeah, well, I like, didn't see we it. were waiting, and we're seeing like sea of pe- a sea of people just leaving the ship. Right. And he kept saying, "Babe, like we're supposed gone. to be priority one." Shout out to the fam that hooked us up with priority one. Amen. We're supposed to be priority one, and all of these people are just He's like going, leaving yet, the like- ship. We're asking employees, like, are we like did we miss something? I know this is new. Like, is the app really going to tell us? They was like, yeah, the app is supposed to. But we they called down. They was like, but the luggage is ready, so go ahead and go down. And it was a cluster buck, y'all. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we was hoping that they changed. Like, Express Checkout is great until it creates those sea of people all over the place. All over the place. So they had it where, so they had a long line that snaked around uh, the ship on the floor. It was getting off. And not to mention that. Then the Wi-Fi went down for the passport machines that where you put your your, your, your face, face recognition. recognition. Those went down. The Wi-Fi for those. So the officers had to check our passports manually. Actually, all of us that was in line, we actually thought we was in the wrong line because the birth certificate and ID line was going, was going. faster than ours. We was like, wait a minute. Did they tell us <laughs> like, to get in the wrong line? I was like, I'm about to be pissed. So, yeah, the officer had to check all of our things. Good thing they didn't do it like they used to do where they yeah. take their time. Nah, they were just like checking, hey, your passport, did you bring anything back? All right. Boom. Have a good day. And you gone. So, we said that to say, that's why we preach on the channel, do not book your flight before way noon. before noon. Because, first... Customs could take a long time to clear the shit when it gets yep. back in the port. Number two, <laughs> it could take a long time to get off the ship. Like we did. <laughs> right. Or number three, something could happen with the Wi-Fi that we never had that to happen <laughs> Never. Before, and that might delay you. So we don't want you to be stressed out about missing the flight that you're going to have to rebook. You might not be able to rebook it. You might have to stay in Miami another night. We don't want none of that. We yeah. want you to get off the ship. Time for you to go home. But we hope that Carnival will eventually get that straight. To not create those sea of people. But however, if you was on the sale in this one, let us know as the Mm -hmm. day progressed. Did did it get better? Did it get better or did it get worse? And then also those of you who have went prior to May the 12th, let us know your experience as well with um, debarkation. debarkation. Yeah. Was it? And then um, also with the embarkation day too. Yeah. Let us know. Because that Wi Fi part was very isolated. Right. So please, please let us know y'all experiences and that'll help out the rest of the family members that are getting and, ready yeah. to get on a kind of a celebration so they'll know what to expect and be prepared for. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go. All right, babe, you want to talk about the food? Let's do it. All right. So let me give you a disclaimer. This is what I always say about cruises it is cruise. Food. food. Say it slowly with me. It is Caru's food. What do I mean by that is there are going to be some things that you like. There's going to be some things that you hate. Right. Things are not going to be seasoned to your tongue. And if you have a native tongue or a Caribbean tongue, it's not going to be to your liking. I'll just go ahead and put it out there like that. If you want to go on a sailor specifically for food, then please do your research and go after those cruise lines that curate menus that's designed by Michelin star chefs, <clears throat> Virgin Voyages, <laughs> places like that. But let's get into some of the things that we ate. Yep. So- All right. So at Embarkation Day, we didn't do our normal guys on burger as we usually do because on this ship, it's in a different location on the Lido deck. So it wasn't one of those things that it was like, Oh, let me go get my guys. We waited a couple of days to go get our guys. So instead, we went ahead and ate at Shaq's Big Chicken. Yeah, man. This is the second time we've done this ship, <laughs> as we said. And we did Shaq's Big Chicken the last time. Yep. As I'm starting to think about it, I still have the same sentiment that I had the last time. It's cool. It's it's good, but it's not 
phenomenal like every like most people say it is. She's speaking for herself. That's what I said. <laughs> Food see, is subjective. See, it's subjective. Like we have like I yeah. think I think it's amazing. I I got the big <laughs> aristotle, aristocrat, arista whatever you want to call it. That motherfucker was good. <laughs> Yes, sir. She was good. So this is what I always say <laughs> as well. I forgot to give this disclaimer. This disclaimer. Food is subjective. Right. It could be good to me, horrible to you, horrible to you, good to me. Chefs change, cooks change, preparation changes. It's just one of those things. But, but go get you a chicken but sandwich. Go get you go a chicken, chicken sandwich. sandwich. Yeah, get you I a chicken sandwich. I wasn't horrible. I ate it twice. Yep. Get you a chicken <laughs> sandwich, man. So the second thing that we ate was the dining room. Yeah. So we we gonna say like with the dining room, we're gonna give a blanket. The last time the dining room food was amazing. Good. Everything yes. that we got was, was amazing. Good. Now this time it was fair. Mm-hmm. I, I would say fair at best. There were some things that stuck out, some things that didn't stuck out. So like one of the things was good. My clam chowder was good. One night I ordered some shrimps that were good. Um, the Szechuan shrimps, the shrimps were good. Mm. The I ordered uh, one night some jerk chicken, it's pork chops, pork chops that that didn't taste like jerk. <laughs> you got jerked around. They just, they just was pork chops. <laughs> they were peppered pork chops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it was it was it was the dining room was fair. Yeah, it was fair. Um, one of the standouts for me and. For me to be talking about tomatoes, lets you know that I was not impressed with the dining room. But those fried green tomatoes that they had were amazing. I could have like made a whole meal out of the fried green tomatoes. <laughs> All the way up until the last night, the food, like I said, was fair. My last night's meal in the dining room, and by that time, our group was done with the dining room. I think right. it was like four of us that even showed up that night to eat as a group in the dining room. And that night, the food was bomb. I can actually say the night that we got off from me, my food was bomb. And I had some kind of beef dish, the fried green tomatoes. Hey, everything was delicious that night. That was the night I had the jerk. And that was the chicken. night he had the, yeah. and the, jer- the jerk. Mean, the, the pork the, chop, it wasn't the, the, the bad. It just was wasn't jerk. Yeah, I wanted jerk. You know, you don't tell <laughs> me that it's, yeah, you, you disrespecting my Jamaican family now, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so another thing that we ate. So we'll preface this by saying we did a few quick eats, but we did some specialty dinings as well. So to go along with the quick eats, we ate at Blue Iguana. Yeah. Blue Iguana slaps every time. Every time. Like they yeah. really just can't do no wrong for me. It's, I mean, because honestly, it's meat and the toppings that you select. If yeah. it's bad, it's because you made it bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, guys, burger, good. Yeah, that always slaps. Always slaps for me. Also, we had family on board, so I was able to like be real black and greedy. So I was picking off of some of the things that they were eating. So a family member of mine went over to the street eats um area and bought the wings. <laughs> Huh, huh, huh. Hey, cuz, huh. cuz, bro, all oh, sis, auntie, grandma. Look, I had to hit him on uh, his leg. Yeah, uh, go over the street eats and it's get on, the wings. It's on the Lido. On, yeah, yeah, garlic go. palm, garlic palm, and the barbecue ones was good and too. And the barbecue, but that garlic yeah. palm, oh, man, yeah, baby, I was like, it's worth the upcharge. Like, yeah. Those were on upcharge. Listen, if it you, was worth it. If you if you've been there on this sale and any sale, and let us know in the comments. What you think about the wings, man? I wouldn't have even thought about that. No. Uh-uh. Because in my mind, wings are wings. I'm probably going to pay an upcharge for the same wings that I can get through um, room service. Mm-mm, totally different wings. Yeah. I don't I don't know who was back yeah. there cooking they it, but was, they, was they bomb. were bomb. Like, I was like, my, my, my fam was like, you can get some more. I was like, I ain't going to do that to you. I ain't going to do that to you. <laughs> so we also had pizza. We oh, yeah, never stood in the Miami Slice line. That's just too much for an introvert like me. We just get it delivered to uh, the room. I paid the five dollars <laughs> and have yeah. it delivered to me, and I also always get the quattro. That's really always, the only yeah. pizza that I eat. Boy. I'm not a pizza person, but on a cruise, I will gravitate to that style of pizza, like the yeah. white style of pizza. We also got wings to go with that. Totally different wings, but they were not bad. Yeah, they weren't bad, but they won't street eat wings. No, yeah, they were not, not even sh- close. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> <laughs> And then one night we were out hanging out late and we found the Midnight Buffet. Oh, over at uh, Guys Picking Anchor. 
Listen, I don't know if they were cleaning out the refrigerator and yeah, just decided had. to slap <laughs> stuff together, but nothing makes sense. Like they we have French fries, lasagna, <laughs> pizza, <laughs> sub sandwich, sub sandwich, chips, <laughs> no dip, <laughs> to, chopped up tomatoes. Like yeah. it was just a, and then, it was, and then it was, cookies. It was basically feed the liquor food. <laughs> That's what it was. It was a feed the and, liquor food. And everyone that was in the line, we. It was a long line. So everybody that was in the line, we were too committed to the line to get out the line. So then when they got up to the to actually see the buffet, they were like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> it was it was a cluster buck, but I mean, none of us walked away from it. Hey, we was able to feed that liquor and we was able to do that. And then a couple of days we did go to the morning buffet to grab some food from the morning buffet. And I will be honest with you. It hit. What oh, yeah. we got it, from it, the buffet. It hit last year. It did. It, yeah, hit. it hit last year. So I have no complaints about the mm-hmm. breakfast on the buffet. Yep. Can we move to specialty now? <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the specialty dining. So this time mm-hmm. for specialty dining, we did bonsai and tapayaki. Uh-huh. We did yeah. bonsai sushi. And we did the Italian restaurant, which is called, because I always mess the name Cucina up. Cucina del Capitano. So we will say and that. And you're missing one. Rudy's Rudy's Seafood, Sea Grill. Seafood Grill. So we Just gonna, Sea Grill. So we'll start with Hibachi. Hibachi was delicious always. It was delicious last time. I think it was better this time. I think it was about the same for me. It, it wasn't. It didn't supersede the last time, but it was great for me. Got you. Uh, great experience. Our server was was great. Mm-hmm. This time we was able to go to Banzai Sushi once again, and I don't know what they did different this time, but the them mis- California rolls and that miso soup. and that miso soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I would say that the specialty dining this time saved the dining room experience. If we didn't do that, like. It's yeah, I, I, I think we would have died. <laughs> right. Except Cachina del Capitano. Yes. So when I uh, when I go Ooh. there, usually I get, well, I get the spaghetti carbonara because it be slapping. What is this down? Sp- spaghetti carbonara. Did I say it right? <laughs> no. Well, you, <laughs> well, you, you know you what did it is. better this time. <laughs> yeah. It was horrible. horrible. And here's the thing. Because he always gets it and I taste it, I was like, Bet I'm not even gonna play with my life. I'm gonna get that. It was horrible. The noodles were gummy. There was no seasoning to nothing. So it was like noodles, white sauce, bacon. Tastes like like bacon noodle soup. Basically. Yeah. Like it it had no like none of the flavors married together, nothing. And here's the thing. So we're doing a comparable from last year to this year, right? When it comes to Cachina del Ca Patano and Shebang are one of those specialty restaurants that are included where you can eat them in place of the dining room at night if you want to. So last year, giving you a comparable, last year, Shebang and Cachina del Capitano was one of those specialty restaurants that were you were able to eat at them. And they did say last year for a limited amount of time. So we yeah. didn't know when this was going to end. But you could eat at those restaurants for free in lieu of going to the dining room eating at the sit-down restaurant if you didn't want to do that. This year, you were able to choose those restaurants just once. Mm-hmm. So you can go to Cachina del Capitano once and you can go to Shebang once. No charge. But if you wanted to double back yeah. and go again, then it was $8 per person. Per person. Yep. So keep that in mind. So for us going to Cachina del Capitano, like we didn't pay anything to be there, but it was a definite, oh, heck no. Oh, we ain't going back. We're not going. Like it was it was bad. Like the food was not good at all. The service not, was amazing though. Yeah, service, but but not all of it was bad. That was rice balls. It was some rice. That's that they don't call rice balls, but that's what you know, some of our family had called them, and that's what we was like. We want to order some of the rice balls. We'll put it in, but we'll right put here. the name of it with right the real here. name of those. Were I could have just had those. It's and call basically it a night. what we all ate, yeah, and, and, <laughs> and call it a night. <laughs> yeah, it's really basically what we all ate. Right to get full, and then also we did. Um, hold on, Rudy Sea Grill. All right. So, yes, we also did Rudy's Sea Grill, and Rudy's does no wrong for me. Yeah, they they really turned they stepped it, it up. Yeah, they stepped it up 
Because uh, last year, <laughs> we let them have it. I mean, not to their that face. Lobster, We're not rude That people. lobster mac and cheese, I don't even Horrible. know what they were thinking. Like, But this year, so when we went in there, we were sitting by uh, auntie and auntie. We'll call auntie and auntie. Hey, was, y'all. <laughs> yeah, what's up, family? They blessed us. Y'all know how y'all blessed us, and mm-hmm. we appreciate we that, appreciate too. We appreciate that. Uh, but she was like, get it. Get it. And we were like, it was nasty uh, it was the last, last time. She was like, uh-uh. She was like, that mac and cheese is good. So you're like, I'm and like, I, like, oh, I, I gotta trust, trust you. Auntie. Man. It slap. It slap. Now, like, Queen said, I can't guarantee you that when you go, it's gonna slap. Mm-hmm. But it slapped this time, this year. Mm-hmm. Then we had the stuffed lobster in peril. I did, anyway. Did you have a stuffed lobster? Yeah, I did. did. I had yeah. it last year, too. For me, it was better last year than it was this year, but it was not <clears throat> bad. Like, it was still good. But Man, last was- year's was... I, my, I didn't have it last year, but this year to me it slapped. It was it was really really good. Yeah. So in conclusion, like we said, we felt like the overall experience was fair this time. Yeah. And what brought it up to fair was those specialty diamonds making up the difference. Yeah, because I agree. Because we, we ate at the dining room more. Um, well, every, all of us do eat at the dining room more than yeah. we eat at the specialty restaurant. So that's why we said fair across the board right. this time. This time. Yeah. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about, and we know that all y'all care about this, especially y'all that like to still be connected to the world. Why are you out at sea? Me. Yeah. The Wi-Fi. So the last time we was on the ship, the Wi-Fi was... We say average or maybe subpar. I remember I had to, I don't even remember. I had, because I use it normally just do the value um, plan, and I had to upgrade to the premium plan for it to go just a little bit faster. Gotcha. But this time, I had the value plan, and she was moving like it was premium Wi-Fi. I felt like I, felt like I was at home on the Wi-Fi. It, it, I, I didn't skip a beat or nothing. How about you? I had premium, and like, I, like he said... I felt like I was at home. I never had any hiccups, never had any things that didn't really work. The only things that did have issue had nothing to do with the Wi-Fi, but the Carnival Hub app always has kind of like that delay in the chat feature. Yeah. That has nothing to do with the internet. It's just the way that the Hub app is built. Yeah. Other than that, that Wi-Fi I had, was wi fi It was wi fi for us. Most of the people in our group did not have any issues at all. Um, I did hear that a couple of people was having connection issues, but I think once it got connected, it was, it was fine. So, yeah, in the comments, if you was on this sailing or the prior sailings, let us know what your experience was with the Wi-Fi. Yeah, did no wrong for me. Did no wrong. Didn't get no refund. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about the drinks. I know this is something that most of y'all care about. And for people like us that are vacation drinkers, I will honestly say, I don't know, and I hate to accuse people of like watering down, (laughs) but I don't feel like it was doing what it usually does. And for somebody like me that I know what will take me there, it just didn't. Like there were a few times where I was like, okay, yeah. This the one right here. But mostly it was just like, oh, this is good. This tastes right. good. You know, it's a good social. But if you wanted to, you know, come out of your, get your personality a little just up, I didn't feel like they were hitting on too much on this cruise. What do you think? Yeah. So some of the drinks were strong. Some of them was, was a little bit weaker than they normally. So we had, of course, we started off with our margarita pitcher, mm-hmm. which was very good. It was, it was good, good, but it wasn't super strong. So mm-hmm. it just, it's got you a little tipsy. That was a good spot. Mm-hmm. Then also we had some of the, our Cadillac margaritas. Now they're going to hit you every now, time. <laughs> they sat, yeah. So they, yeah, they I had, made his grandma in. Yeah. Uh, I actually had a couple of the old fashions. They had my eyes crossed a little bit. How can it not? <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, of course, I had my Long Islands, and the user, user, they hit anyway. And then, of course, I had my Tokyo tea. I only had two Tokyo teas this time because <laughs> in another video or we're gonna in the live, why. we're going to have to tell you the story time of what happened to your boy <laughs> after consuming a Tokyo tea on top of some other stuff on embarkation day. Yeah. <laughs> so that's coming. Then, of course, I had my, from the Alchemy Bar, the Hennessy Sidecar, but I got them to make it with the Hardys. I didn't even taste that. I don't even know where you were when you had that, to be honest with you. Where were you? 
I don't, I don't even remember. <laughs> I, just, I just know I, I know I got. He just one. know he had it. Yeah. So, so some of the drinks were strong. Some of them wasn't. But hey, we was able to still get our drink on. We did at least feel them. Yeah. Uh, at but some I, point. Yeah. But yeah, day one was. Uh, they one was, was, a it was hard but, for a pimp on day look, one. <laughs> Call of a celebration for um, Stanley one, Stanley zero. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about our room. So first, we want to talk about our room location. Yes. Because last year, we felt like we picked a good location to the time to go anywhere. Anywhere. Because <laughs> so we felt like we walked and we walked and we walked. And we did. Yeah. So this time, the queen actually selected us a room on midship aft. That's how I'm going to call it because it won't the aft and it wasn't quite midship. Yeah, it's right it, in that it, middle. It was right in that, and it was, you. we got Perfect. to everything quick, fast. We had the Lido fast. We had the buffet fast. We had all the specialty diners fast. We had the shows fast. Everything we wanted to go, it wasn't follow like yellow big road for miles to get there. It was Perfect. It was. Yeah, so you did your thing with that this time. Oh, yeah. Y'all learned from experience. Right. So what we uh, what I'll do right here is I'm going to put... We can put a map up right here and show mm-hmm. them like where that room at so they can be able to pick it themselves yeah. or at least in that area. So here's the map right here. So this is the location that you can get in this area right here. And I, I in yeah. my opinion, it's the best place to mm-hmm. be because it gets you to where everything is quickly without you having to do this, 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 this. Right. It's basically in our room... Elevator around yep, right, the corner, right, right around the corner. Boom! And do when you look at the map, do not get afraid of your room being close to the elevator. The way that this ship is made, the elevators are kind of like here, and then there's these doors that go like this, and it right. takes you away from the noise, and then it goes around a corner. So that's where your rooms are. So don't think that just because it may look like it's like two or three doors down away from the elevator. It is, but it's not. Right. So it's not going to be like this noise trap for you. Right. <clears throat> we were quiet. <laughs> yeah. So we was in room 12402, and uh, we had the standard back balcony cabin. Mm-hmm. Wasn't nothing special about it. Balcony it's cabin. It's a balcony cabin. Yeah. So we have the same sentiment that we had last year. Great room. This time, we didn't hear all the water and stuff in the ceiling and the creeks and the cracks. No, that was Icon. No, it was. No, we heard. No, I'm sorry. I'm mixing up ships. That's here. Icon. Yeah, that was Icon <laughs> with all the creeks and all the noise. No, this yeah. one was, it felt like water was in our ceiling and in our walls the last time. But we didn't no, hear that. that. Was, no, that was magic. That was a carnival magic. No, that was celebration. I doubt it. Put money on it. That was that was the magic. Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to take I'm gonna have to take her word for it. You put money on it. He won't put the money on it, y'all. <laughs> All right. The next thing we want to talk about, and this isn't really a change. It's more of a enforcement, enforcement of something that they should have been doing a long time ago. But so, for instance, there is a controversy around the corking fee that Carnival charges you when you bring a bottle of wine to the dining room. Some people think that. If they touch it, then yes, they can charge you $15. No, the the real thing and the real deal isn't, trust me, I'm a travel agent, we go through this training. The real deal is if you bring the bottle yeah. to the restaurant, whether you need to get them to touch it, whether it's a screw top or anything, they want to charge you the $15. And that's they really should have been doing it the entire time. But to be honest, we have bought bottles of wine from our room to the dining room for years. They have never, never tried to charge it. us nope. because most of the time we bring a screw top or it's open before we get there anyway. This time, we took our regular normal bottle that we usually take, screw top, and as soon as we put it on the table, they said, because you did not get this provided by us or gifted to your room, we're going to have to charge it for you to drink it here in the dining mm-hmm. room. And, you know, I politely was like, you know, yay, because I'm not going to drink it. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and he was he was nice about it. But yeah. we did bring a <clears throat> bottle of champagne with us from the room. And because that was something that Carnival recognized as a gifted item that possibly was in your room, they they bop, bop. Yep. Nothing was said about it. So yeah, he was like, can, you can drink that one for free. <laughs> yeah, you can drink that one for free. So this is the way around it. Yeah. If you want to drink a bottle of wine from something that you have in your room, 
Use the glasses, clean them first. Use the glasses in your room, pour your wine in there and take the glass with you to the dining room. Yep. Do not take the bottle. Right. So that's the way around it. That's the hack. That's the hack. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we want to talk about was a major change and a major shock to <laughs> us. I'm still not so when we went settled to, with that. <laughs> yeah. So on day one, you know, you're supposed to do your mustard. Yeah. Mustard, not mustard. mustard. Yeah, not mustard, mustard. He didn't you didn't say mustard, but I yeah. know somebody in the yeah, comments said, What is mustard? I have said mustard. No. <laughs> mustard. Yeah. So make sure you do that. So when we was doing our mustard drill, the guy was like, yada yada. He was like, So in the case of emergency, you need to come back here to the mustard station to get your life vest. And that's and, it. And everybody said, Huh? So I said so he kept talking, so I was like, he kept talking. Then I was like, okay. Are you bucking so with us? I was like, are you playing with us? Or are Is you serious true? that the life vests are not in the room anymore? He said, no, no they're not in the room anymore. In the room. You have to come, come here. here. So but we was like, but if it's emergency and this is under the water, what do we do then? He said. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. And, and, and to be honest, even when we left out of there, I was like, this has to be some kind of joke day. Because he, he was a, he black guy friendly like he we, was a, he was a photographer he was a photographer like he goofy personality i said oh he just bucket with us like the life vest gonna be in the room uh-uh uh, we look we look when we got in there it wasn't because i was gonna go back to him and be like you got us bro you got us back Mm-mm. yeah but uh i mean that logic our room could if something happened our room could be underwater too but our logic was that you only see your mustard station one time as far as intentionally on day one. Right. Unless, cause our and must, you don't remember. So our mustard station was the Limelight Lounge, which was the club. Mm-hmm. But after you done had you a few ones and you done been moving around the ship for days, if something was to happen, you're going to be like, where's that mustard station at again? I have a better chance going I into my a, room. Yes, because I have been to my room a hundred times. I know where that's at. I know where that's at. So that's our concern is... For the ones that may forget where the mustard station is, mm. uh, I, I don't like it. Yeah, so y'all, I don't like it at all. Y'all let us know what y'all think. If you <laughs> like it, dislike it, I don't like it. I, I think Look, they need to change it back. So, remember I asked them, I said, well, how much insurance do y'all have, have on, on us? us? Right. <laughs> because this sounds like a setup. Right. Like, I didn't like it at all. So to the point that me and my husband were like, I think we're going to start traveling with, like, travel a life, life vest. vest. Yeah. Like, not those bulky ones, but maybe one that's going to keep you bobbing in the ocean <laughs> oh, yeah. for like maybe 45 minutes yeah. or whatever. Long enough to be rescued. Rescued. Yeah. Long <laughs> enough. It's going to be yellow. Right. Because like, I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> Carnival. Like, you starting to, you starting to piece me out. <laughs> I don't trust it. Ooh. I don't trust it at all. Lord. All right. So, another thing that we want to talk about overall entertainment is about the same. Yeah. I will say that I felt like this year, some of the things that they usually are like popped out in your face were kind of hidden in the out. Like when it came to like White, White Night, Night and yeah. like the 80s, 80s party, like the titles kind of got lost in the sauce within the app to the point that some people even in our group were like, they miss White they Night. They miss White Night because the way that they were wording things, it wasn't like they were theming them like they usually were. Right. So I don't know if that's something that anybody else can speak to or that they notice, but it is a difference in the app. So be careful. Really look at it and catch those things. You may even want to put them Shoot. in your calendar or something. Speaking of the rocking 80s glow party, boy, this was the first time, man, we had a great time. Boy. Oh, we, we had like, them all. We were dancing our tail off out there, boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and another thing that we have noticed and I don't know if they're taking a page out of Royal Caribbean's book, where Royal Caribbean does a really good, a really good job of crowd controlling the mm-hmm. people, so that everybody is not in one place, place at, at one, one time. time. Yeah. But I feel like Carnival doesn't quite have it yet because the people that are in one area are usually the same people that you are trying to make go to this area and leave this area empty. If that makes sense. So, for instance. With um, Royal Caribbean, you could be having, for instance, some kind of deck party going on, and then all of a sudden ice skating is going on. Well, sometimes the people that's at that party don't want to go to ice skating. Right. So you have a good 
mix of people that stays and a good mix of people that goes. Carnival had their electric white night. And then all of a sudden, it was Family Feud. Was it Family Feud? It was one of the game shows. It was one of the game popular show. game shows that Going everybody on. wanted. It was Family Feud that everybody wanted to go to. So all of a sudden, everybody in their white was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And took off to go because then you have to go get a seat for Family Feud. And I said, who the heck did this at the same time? Right. Like, it made no sense. So there was a lot of overlap. With the popular things, yeah, it was within Carnival this time that you had to make a decision. Yeah, <laughs> am I going to go to this or I'm going to go to that? Because it was very rare that you could catch both, right? Because you just couldn't be in two places at one time. That's what um he said on that song, hey, "Baby, I can't be in two places at one time." Huh? If you think you're lonely now, I'm not going to be at that white night party. <laughs> Ooh yeah, Ooh yeah. All right, family. So make sure. I know a lot of you right now are getting ready to jump on the carnival celebration mm-hmm. for the Nick sailing coming up or later this year, next year. So make sure that when you go, come back to the video and let us know yeah. your experience because we've been talking about now we're gonna be going back on there for the third time. We don't <laughs> yes, know we, we, we don't know when, but we're going back for the third time because we felt like this time we enjoyed it way better than we did this we time. We did. So we're gonna we need we need a round three. But if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you go and check out our Embarkation mm-hmm. Day video, which is here on the screen, the day one that we was on the ship. And we're going to catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace. Peace.